This is the seventh part in the series on reactive programming in Dart and Flutter. So here we finally are going to demonstrate how to do all the stuff with streams and string controllers and the Flutter app. So I have an almost plain Flutter app and what I'm going to do is just build out one text field that's going to display some numbers. So here we have a body and it's going to be just some centered text. And for now it will just have one, two, three in it. Right, now let me rewrite the function for emitting three numbers that we used in our previous videos and we'll see how to use them in Flutter. So we have a stream of integers and the name of that function is going to be get numbers. And if you remember, it's going to have an async modifier with an asterisk at the end. And here in the body of the function, we're just going to loop from 1 to 3 and emit all of those three values with a 1 or 2 second delay between them. Alright, and now let's see how to use this in the Flutter app. So let me just move this function up a little bit. So what we want to do is whenever the get numbers stream emits a new value, we want to display the value emitted in this text widget over here. So the first thing that may come to mind is just holding some state up here and then subscribing to the stream and whenever it emits a new value, we're just going to set the state of that property and it's going to update the UI. That's a valid solution, but not the best one. But let's just try it out for the demonstration sake. So since we're going to hold state, we're using a stateful widget over here. And let's just make it int current number. And it's going to be empty. And then in the init state function, we're going to subscribe to the get numbers stream. So we're going to say get numbers dot listen. And if you remember, we need to provide a method for handling when new data comes in. So here we have data. And now what we'll use is the setState function that's built into the state class to mutate the state. So we're going to use setState and just say current number equals to data. All right. And the one last thing that is left to do is to use this property down here. So we'll say if current number is equal to null. So if it's not actually equal to null, then we're going to display that number and convert it to a string because the text widget will throw an exception if we pass anything but a string. But then if it is null, we're just going to say no data here. All right, so I think that's sufficient enough. Let me run the app. All right, I ran the app, but the data seems to be very hard to see so i'm just going to add some style to the text in order to make it bigger so we'll use the style property and say text style and it's going to be font size of 50. all right now let me restart the app so we can see the whole behavior all right now we have number one then we wait for a couple seconds then we get number two and then we should get number three yeah so yeah, that's how you would consume a stream, but there is an even easier way without the whole init state and holding state and all that kind of stuff. So let me remove all of this and then just say that center is going to have a child of a stream builder. Let me just wrap it with a stream builder. All right. And the stream builder is just a widget that takes in a stream that is going to emit that data. So over here we're going to say get numbers and here we have a builder function. We have a snapshot. The snapshot is going to tell us whether or not we have any data and we will be able to get that data from the snapshot. And the context is just the build context that is always getting passed around. So the way we would get the number now is by using the snapshot.data property. So we could use snapshot.data. And of course, it would be of type int, so we would have to convert it to a string. And we can also check if snapshot has data. If it has data, then we'll display the data. And if it doesn't have any data, we'll just say no data here. All right. And this snapshot that has data is pretty much a null check. So let me go over to the definition of the has data property. And it's just together, it says if the date is not equal to null, then this is going to be true. So this is the same if we put if snapshot.data is not equal to null. So yeah. So, so here what we did is we used the stream builder 
in order to build a widget that is dependent upon data from a stream. So you can see how this is an a lot more convenient solution and we don't even need to have this be a stateful widget anymore. We can just remove this and say stateless widget and this would work just fine. Oh, here we got an error, probably because when you go from a stateful widget to a stateless widget, apps sometimes tend to crash. So I'll just rerun the app. All right, so here's the app up and running again, and it's doing the same thing it was doing before. So yeah, what we can also do is apply operators to our streams, just like we did before. We can say, I don't know, we could say where, a certain number is equal to three. I don't know, actually, oh, like this. So if a number is equal to three, it's going to be emitted from the stream. So now if I save the app, actually I need to restart it. We should only get number three. So it says no data here. And then we wait until three is emitted. And then we got our number three. We can also use the map operator to say that a certain number is equal to itself times 121. And now that I save this and refresh this, number 121, then 242, and 363. Right, so now I'll try to show the true capabilities of the string controller. I'm going to create a class that's going to be named home model and it's just going to serve as kind of a container to our string controller. All right, so now we have pretty much what we need. Also, we need to add a dispose method. Okay, so that's pretty much all. Only thing we have left to do is add a dispose method. The dispose method is just going to close down the whole string controller in order to prevent memory leaks. All right, and we'll use this dispose method in the widget we use the whole container. So here in the home page, let's just create an instance of that home container and it's going to say final container. And this is going to be equal to a home container. And I now thinking about it, it's not a good name. Let's just name it home model instead of home container. Here below, I'm going to create two widgets, which are going to communicate and basically modify what's displayed in each of those, but they're not going to communicate directly. Instead, they're going to communicate through the string controller that we get in our home model. So these two widgets are going to take an instance of a home model. So let me create those below. All right, so now that we have those widgets, let's create their constructors. I forgot to mention, if you are going to have this sort of a thing, a model or a block or whatever, you should not be passing this thing down the widget tree because it just gets too repetitive. You should probably use some kind of a dependency injection solution or something like that. So down here, I'm going to create a text widget that's going to subscribe to a stream contained in the home model. So we're going to use a stream builder give it a type parameter event. The stream is going to be the model dot out numbers and the builder is just going to display the data that's going to be passed in. All right, and our second widget is going to have just a button. And whenever that button is pressed, we're just going to put in some data into our string controller. It's just going to be a random number. All right, so in theory, we should get displayed these two widgets and a column over here. We're going to have a text widget and a button below it. So whenever we cl click a button, a random integer is going to get generated and put into the stream. And because a new value was put into the stream, the stream builder is going to basically rebuild whatever is over here and just show that new data. So let me save the app. And now I'll just say, press me and it works just fine.
So yeah, I hope you see what I'm aiming at over here. If you can retrieve the same instance of a home model or of home block or whatever you want to call it, you will just be able to update the data without directly getting an instance of a widget or something like that. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to build a real world app using streams and Flutter.